Hey, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back to Plastic Addict episode. This is number 26. Today, today's going to be a little mellow episode. Uh, it's going to be great, though, because we're going to have a special guest on as well. So you're not going to want to miss it. Let's get into it. One, two, three, four. So earlier this week, I asked you guys on Twitter... What's, uh, what's some questions I can answer on the podcast? So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Um, I'm, I'm just going to go through these questions, and we're, we're going to answer them, and it's going to be a good time. Um, first, first question is from Alex Dolly. He says, do you like working at Foundation? What are your favorite and least favorite parts of the gig? That's a good question. Um. Of course, I lo- I absolutely love working at Foundation. Uh, no, they aren't paying me to say that either. Um, when I first started at Foundation, I was just doing the warehouse stuff. Wasn't doing, you know, just sorting discs, putting stickers on discs, and fulfilling orders. And I was totally content with that. Um, but I really found the passion to start editing and start making content and uh, foundation provided me a way to do that. So super grateful. Uh, that's kind of why we're here today um, because of Hunter and Brody and all the guys at foundation. Um, as far as my favorite, uh, either either podcasting like this or video editing because that's what I'm going to school for right now, video editing. Um, love to... V- Love to edit, um, put things together, make a story out of nothing, and uh, yeah. So I love doing that. The least favorite part of the gig. Um, the least favorite part, probably just doing the warehouse stuff. I know somebody's got to do it, but um, yeah, <laughs> that's the least favorite part, I guess. Um, overall, though, I love it so much. Um, it's, it's a true dream job, if you will. Um, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, next one comes from S- Saul, Saul Rudd Disc Golf. He says, choose one plastic from each company that is a must have, i.e. enhances a specific mold, great in certain weather, forehand friendly, etc. Okay. Um, I will say I love Discraft plastic. Um, for the forehand, I feel like it's, I feel like it's not too sticky. It's not too tacky. Um, and then it's not too slippery either. Um, I feel like it's great on the forehand. It doesn't slip out for me as much and it doesn't want to stick to my hand either. Um, I have had some of the stickier plastics like Castaplast, um, the, the Dismania, new Dismania Sea line some of those other, uh, plastics that newer the newer plastics that companies are coming out with um they are stickier and tackier and i found i don't really like them on the forehand i like them on the backhand is fine um but i feel like they most of the time they kind of stick to my hand um no matter how much chalk you use um so that's definitely the forehand friendly um great in weather i've heard Man, good in the rain, probably just like uh, I don't know. I feel like I feel like par blend would be super good in the rain, just because you got that tacky feel of like say like the Luna plastic. I feel like it'd be super good in the rain, just because it's got that almost gritty sand, not sandpaper, but it's got a bunch of grit and like ridges in it. I feel like it'd be really good in the rain. Um, yeah. Great question, though. Awesome. Um, ben Olson says, "What are your top favorite, top three favorite pros to watch?" Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna exclude Brody from this. Um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say first Chris Dickerson, just because he's a beast and I love watching him play. He's always got something up his sleeve, and I feel like Chris is just so consistent right now. Uh, he's probably one of the most consistent players on tour that we've seen, just because of his finishes. I mean, he's single-handedly in the 
top three. A lot of terms he's playing. So, Chris, I'm going to say Chris. I'm going to say, um, man, there's so many people. I'm going to say... I'm gonna say Drew Gibson second, just because I think he, he he well I know he just bombs and it's amazing to watch and the the sheer snap he has on the disc is is incredible and I I can't do it and I I want to do it um but I can't <laughs> so kind of jealous but yeah uh, Drew Gibson second all right and then number three hmm. I enjoy I enjoy watching Jeremy Colling. A little dark horse pick, but I think just seeing his this his forehand is beautiful and I strive to be like him. <laughs> uh no, he's, he is a really good forehand. Um and I am building my forehand. So I think it's super fun to watch. He's all his lines that he said and when he is on coverage. Um like this past this past weekend at Ida Wild, I saw he was up there. Uh, I think he's tied for I think he was tied for ninth. Um, but yeah, super fun to watch. Top three pros. Those, those are my top three pros to watch. Favorite. Um, Devin. Other than Firebird, what's a what's the best? Okay, not a. What's the best? Super overstable nine speed. Well, other than a Firebird. I would say super overstable. I'm gonna say Captain's Raptor would be would be your other best option. Now those two, like we're saying, like a Sexton Firebird and a Captain's Raptor, um, they obviously feel a whole lot different. But that's that's probably the two that I'd say are super overstable. Then you got the you, you kind of got the category of the felon, and then you got the uh, you got the regular raptor. And then you got some of the dark horse brands as well. I assume you didn't say sex and firebird, so I'm not super over stable. Super over stable depends depends on what you're talking about. Captain's raptor. Or just Raptor. I love throwing the Raptor. I had a beat-in Raptor that just like we it just like flew straight and then just faded a little bit, not too much. That was my go-to. Lost it this week. Trophy Lakes wasn't fun, but I mean, you know, it was a cool shot. I had to go for it. It was like three three twenty on i forget what hole it was it was the back nine 320 over water water carry and you could either lay up to the water or you could try and go over the water i tried to go over the water and landed right in the water so you live and learn um kent um kent says which disc and which plastic is the most underrated in your opinion Huh. That's a good. There's so many Dark Horse brands out there. There's so many. And it's great to see. Um, man. I guess I'll go. I guess I'll go mold first. Which disc is most underrated? There's so many out there. <laughs> That's the thing. We'll come back to that one. I think that one that one requires a little bit more thought into it. All right. Next one. Next up, we got Todd. Todd says, how and why did you choose to work at Foundation DG? Well, Todd, um, I, I had known Hunter for a year, about, right as COVID was going on and I, I had known all right no scratch that what am I what am I saying I've known her for like 
five, four years. Yeah, four years. Um, and then when COVID started, he was like, disc golf was blowing up at the time. He All he was talking about was disc golf, disc golf, disc golf, disc golf this, disc golf that. I was like, "What? Is, what is this sport? Like, what is? What do you do with this frisbee?" And he, you know, he took me out. Also, Brad, all business, Brad from in the bag. Fun fact: we played our first round of disc golf together. If you didn't know, so that that's that was a cool experience. But he took Hunter, took me and Brad out. First round of disc golf, Peaksview Park. Just a little pitch and putt. Super. Fun course, just to if you've never played. But uh, yeah, that's how I got to know Hunter. You know, soon after I got into it, about six months. Nah, not even that. Three, three months later, and Hunter was like, "Hey, man," or no, I texted Hunter. I was like, "Hey, if you if you ever need any help, like in the uh, shop or the office or the warehouse, uh, let me know." And he was like, okay, yeah. And, you know, I think another month went by, and then he's like, hey, like, um, we just dropped all these Discraft impacts, I think it was, uh, the, like, special edition impacts we, we ran. He was like, hey, you want to come help and um, pack some orders and pull some orders and just help with warehouse stuff? I was like, yeah, sure. And uh, from there, it just turned from one one drop into another and then just full-time warehouse or not full-time warehouse but like 30 35 hours in the warehouse and now we're here making content and yeah that's that's kind of how i got started i just knew hunter and and uh they were just looking for for some help great question um next up Sub Zero says, "What is it like having the best hair out of all the guys?" Hmm. As a tall order, I don't. I think Connor has the best hair. I think he does. I think he does. But thank you. I uh, Hunter. All Hunter does is take a, like a two guard and just buzz his head. Trevor. Trevor is always wearing a hat. Always. And Connor's wearing the hat about half the time, three quarters of the time. I don't know. I I'm a very uh, haven't gotten used to the hats yet. I'm not a big hat guy, but I'm I'm slowly getting into hats. So as we come out with more, I'm starting to wear them more and more, and I'm getting used to it. You know, I'm getting used to it. Um, here we go. Next up, good question though. Good question. Is it poor form for player for touring pros to complain about the wind and rain? I mean, I think this depends. I think you're referring to the Drew tweet, <clears throat> which is basically like, ah, uh, why do we touring pros have to play in forty mile an hour uh, wind and rain? I mean, it makes sense. He didn't play very good. Anthony Barella tweaked his back. Injuries injuries happened, and Drew didn't play good. I think that was just a, a tweet coming from the lost side of Drew. Just kind of mad at, mad at he, he didn't do good. Because if he did good, he probably wouldn't have tweeted that. That's, that's the thing. Um, people are going to complain, though. People are going to complain. It's it's part of life. Um, is it? Do I think that it's bad? Not necessarily. No. Um, in in moderation. No. It is if it gets excessive, then yeah. You know, if you're just looking at everything, trying to criticize every little thing, then yeah, you're not gonna. That's not the best way to look at things, is to criticize things. Um, I think there are times where you should criticize and try and do better. Um, but I think that in excess is bad and it, it's not good for you and the people around you and the people you're impacting. 
So, yeah. Why haven't you dyed Trevor, Trevor's disc yet? If you're referring to the eagle, the like fake Huck Lab stamp, <laughs> I did do that. It didn't come out very good. Um, but I mean, no, it came out all right. Uh, I basically took like vinyl wrap and like cut a stencil out. It was a cool idea. It didn't, the, it, it, it showed up like brown instead of like actually black. So not sure. I think it's the dye that I used. I used the regular, um, the dye, the dye I always use pro chem. I use pro chem. Um, and apparently you're supposed to use like RIT or I dye poly for the like water based, um, black mixture when you do that. So, and you're supposed to heat it up. I didn't heat it up either. So it's like heat the dye mixture in a pan. Didn't do that. Should have done that. Um, we didn't have a stove at the office. So I did microwave it. I did. Uh, it didn't really do much though. So, um, But I did dye him a Star Destroyer. It's like pink and black. Pretty sick. Pretty, pretty sick. Um, Hunter, Hunter replied to the tweet. He said, what's the coolest disc you've seen come into the warehouse? And what's a disc that we all thought was cool, but you didn't get the hype? What's the coolest disc you've seen come into the warehouse? Jeez, there's so, there's been so many cool ones, man. There's been so many cool ones. Um, I'm gonna say just like runs, not any like special edition, like one disc. I'm gonna say like, oh man. There's been so much. There's been so many discs. I'm going to say. Um, I don't know. I gotta think about that. I gotta think about that one. I'll I'll answer the second half. He said, "What was a disc that you thought that they all thought was cool, but I didn't?" I am gonna say the uh the all of the KC Rock and all of the one offs from that, um, like. Uh, this like will okay so for instance <laughs> just the uh, like just last week um hunter bought this will shoe strick rock but it was like shoe string will shoe string rock and i was like what is this he's like yeah dude it's a special disc and i was like dude this looks so stupid like what is the hype behind this it literally just says will shoe strick and it's got a little um like shoelace for the stamp uh, you know, it's whatever. It's whatever. Uh, he, <laughs> they all thought it was the coolest thing ever. I was like, what the heck is this? Like, this is not worth your money. But yeah, it's a, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Old end of a man. Gotta love it. Um, I don't, I mean, it's cool. I do like the CE stuff. That is pretty sick. But I haven't gotten, I haven't gotten deep into the into the old innova collector just not me it's just not me yet yet i feel like i i definitely could get into it but we're not there yet um favorite disc golf professional okay back to the back to the top 3 um let's say chris dickerson right now this guy's a beast he just He's just doing so good out there on the tour. It's hard to not root for him. That's all I'll say. Um, here we go. From Aaron, make a six-disc bag, but cannot have more than one disc from each company. No repeating manufacturers. Okay. Uh, Discraft. Okay, I'm going Discraft Raptor. I'm going... I'm going my putter. Lad 264 Hope. Actually, no. I'll go P2. Dismania P2. 
Actually, no, I'm going Latitude 64 Hope because that's, that's an easy one. I'm going so we got a overstable fairway. We've got putter. Um, I think I'm going like beaten in of a destroyer. So that'd be a distance driver. I think I'm going, uh, I probably need something flippy, flippy fairway. I'm going cast Falk. blast falk. Um, I can't do the zone as a disc craft. I'm going, oh, this is harder than I thought. I need a zone. I need a zone. I could go tactic. I could go tactic. Um, I can't go. I can't go Toro. Oh, uh, no. I was going to say Slammer, but that's too slow. That's too slow. Uh, I'm going to go Tactic. This Mania Tactic. That's five, six. Um, we have this Mania. We need... We have Castaplast. Um, I'm going, I need like a... I need like a understable. I don't know. No, I need a mid. I need a mid. I don't have any mids. I'm going with the mint discs Mustang. Boom. Dark horse. Mint disc Mustang. I love that disc. Uh it's in it's no, it's not in the bag right now. But it's basically a discraft meteor. Um mint disc though, let me tell you. Mint discs are something else. I uh I love what they're doing over there. Mint disc, man. Great. The Mustang is a great disc. If you haven't tried it, be, it's like a... It's, I would say it's like a beat-in buzz, this craft meteor, somewhere in there. And it feels good. Good plastic. Um, what is the... Oh, even during your worst rounds, what's one thing in your bag that you can always count on? Well, if you would have asked me last week, I would have said my Discraft Raptor, like, it was beat in. Good. Um, now, without that? Ah, oh, man. I'm going to go right now. What do I rely on right now? I'm going to go with... My bag is ever changing. I felt like oh no, I'm going Ah no, I can't. What's a what's what's a disc that you can always I'm going Discraft Thrasher. I'm going Discraft Thrasher because I feel like when I'm not throwing anything good, I'm I'm doing I can usually get something out of that disc. So yeah, I'm going to Scrap Thrasher. What is... Oh, uh, this is coming from Burner. What's the best plastic ever? I answered this one a little while ago. It's been a minute, but I'm still going with Castaplast K1. I love the grippiness. I love the tackiness of Castaplast. I think, and here's the thing, is it doesn't wear, the, the grippiness does not wear down nearly as much as any other company, I think. I said it. Oh, drop the phone. Yeah. Cast Blast K1. That's, I think it's the best. Let me know what you think the best plastic is. I want to hear that. Um. All right. Uh, do, do, do. Best if you know you know disc. Something from a small company or in a small, very unpopular mold slash plastic. Let's see. Connor was actually telling me about... Connor is the king of this category right here. And he said... He told me a disc. I saw... Oh, it's the, it's the Storm Discs Crater. And he said it's just a... I saw it. It's a very overstable, like, zone-like disc. Um, not a super unique flight by any means. Not a super unique flight at all. But he said 
It is very zone-like. Yeah, storm disc crater. That's what it is. Uh, super zone-like. If you don't want to throw a zone, like Con if you're like Connor and you just you don't want to go with the flow, you don't want to throw a discraft zone. Pick you up a storm disc crater because that's the. Yeah, I'm going with that. I'm going with the storm disc crater. All right, what is up, everyone? We are back here with Brody Smith, the one and only. Brody, what do you what do you got on your hands, man? What is that? Uh, this is one of the most expensive discs in the world. How much did that cost? Over seven hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, backstory. Why? What was the what was the purpose in in buying this thing? Uh, I feel like Kelsey found it online. Yeah. And she tweeted something about it, and then everyone was like, "Brody, you should get it for her. Get it, get it." Type of thing. And then I finally was like, "All right, if it get if this gets X amount of retweets, I'll buy it." And uh, yeah, like an hour later, I got it. So I was like, "All right, well, jeez." We so it comes it. in. So what, what, came, what's it got? A carrying case? A um, little bag? So it came in. So it came in a a pretty nice box. A box that I would assume like they send their purses in. Oh, so like so like very nice, like well constructed. Yeah. Uh, tissue paper, all that. Very okay. very nice. And then it has this like just like a who knows how expensive. This is where it's weird because, like, to me, like, this probably feels like $3, this bag. Yeah, but it's made but out of, like, some... But it's Prada. Yeah. So it's, like, I don't know. This this bag probably sells for $100. <laughs> I have no idea, actually. Yeah, yeah. It could it could be $3, yeah, it, but it could also be 100 It very well could be. But this is the, the piece. The unveiling here. It has a nice... Oh. I should even notice that. I think that's like what they put that's on sick. their purses, like maybe? a certificate. Yeah, like a little thing on the back, and then it's got the Prada belt buckle thing to unlatch it, and then yeah, it's just oh a frisbee. It's just a frisbee. <laughs> it's, it's just a frisbee. The the thing it's sad too is like it would have been cool if they somehow were able to get a frisbee that was like unbranded. Yeah. But like you can see the company that this frisbee was from, and I can just go online and buy and like, buy the same one. I can buy this frisbee for ten dollars. <laughs> but sad. but you do I have mean, a Prada stamp. Yeah, but couldn't you literally do that too? Yeah, I could stencil that. Yeah. So how do you know this? We is might have to make a fake one and compare. It but there's compare no the way two. of knowing that this is like the. There's no way of knowing this is official. Yeah. How would well, you, be a, you got you got the the bag but other than that like is there no marking on there that's no, like Prada that's what I'm saying in? there's nothing on here that's like it's literally just a $10 frisbee and this this isn't even uh this is just hot stamped right that's what it is that's, yeah is that what that is well careful it's $700 <laughs> yeah, gosh. but also look yeah. at the condition yeah, of the frisbee yeah it's very but look, like but the, look at that it's it looks like unfinished almost and there's this like blemish in here there's like scuffs and stuff so i don't know if they if that how many times have you, have you thrown this we haven't thrown it at all that's how it came. and it looks this bad yeah so i don't know if that's like like look at just like up here there's yeah, so many scuffs there's, there's so many scuffs and so, scratches in it yeah i honestly have no idea I, honestly, if I bought this for ten dollars, I would I would be like, man, this guy's this condition kind of sucks. <laughs> but I bought it for seven hundred. Oh my so goodness! So I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. This That's is metal. Cool. This is metal. That's cool. That is a very satisfying click. That's a seven hundred dollar click right there. So we think this is seven hundred dollars. This is that's got to be that's easily. That that's what you're. That, it seems like that's what you're paying for right now. But I think I think this is what you guys are gonna bring back to the office. And just hang it up. Yeah, I think Hunter. Yeah. I think you gotta hang this up with the, oh, like with that. Yeah. Cause that looks way better. That looks a whole lot better. Yeah. That can be like the centerpiece. Yeah. Cause so we got a little. We got a we got a wall in the office going. That's is what I heard. So that? I figured. I f I don't know what's on the wall yet, but I figured this would be a great piece to little, put on little the wall. Centerpiece. There you go. Yeah. Uh, what so. else? We, what else we got over there? Uh, okay, so a little bit more interesting and actually um, usable, I guess you could say, <laughs> is we got the uh, Dark Horse Nukes. Heck yeah. Um, 
Yeah, they feel ESP. They're actually very. Are they? Dumb. Are they clear? They're very or domey. They, or no? No. So like they're the, pretty opaque. Because yeah. I know the Raptors are like clear almost. The, those were those were you like know? Z metallic, I think, or something. So those some, uh, they yeah, had some like, like smoke that. ones and like yeah, yeah, yeah some you could see through. So these, these are just solid. These are just solid black on black dark horse nukes. They actually. Yeah. I'm very curious as to how they fly because they feel like the nukes. Oh, you haven't that thrown I, it yet. No, they feel like the nukes that I like throwing, where it's got like a little, little of the pop top. Yeah. To them. Okay. Um. So we'll 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 go test these out, uh, and see how they fly. But we have a hundred of these going on sale, uh, at the Foundation Charleston store, which is where we're in right now. Yep, that's where we're at. And uh, by the time this video's out, you probably have a couple hours to make your way over here. Yeah. And pick one up. Yeah, because this drops at three, so you got two hours. Yeah. So. Awesome. Sick. Well, that'll be great. If you're not already on on route, definitely come give this, give this, check this out. Uh, only a hundred of these bad boys. Uh, you're not going to want to miss it. Yeah. All right, Brody. Thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, thanks for having appreciate me. Appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate it. All right, and there we have it. This is going to wrap up episode 26 of Plastic Attic. It was great to have Brody on, such a special guest. Hope you guys enjoyed, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.